Nowadays, everyone is just talking about Devon, which is a groundbreaking AI software engineer capable of coding, debugging, and even developing apps and websites. But here's the catch: Devon is super exclusive and expensive. Well, there is a good news for all of you. Introducing Devika. the free open source alternative to devon ai devika is an advanced ai software engineer that is all set to replace the devon it can understand high level human instructions break them down into steps research relevant information and write code to achieve the given objective devika utilizes the large language models planning and reasoning algorithms and web browsing abilities to intelligently develop the software let's go ahead and see how you can install devika locally on your linux operating system so the first step is to create a folder inside which you will clone the github repository for devika so firstly i'm going to open the terminal inside this folder once we have the folder now we need to clone the repository for that head to your browser and this is the repo that we have to clone in order to locally install devika you can see that we have all the source code along with all the files and requirements right here we also have the table of contents and all the steps in order to install and use devika So now let's quickly click on this code button right here it will give you the https url in order to clone this repository using git and make sure that you have git installed on your local system in order to use it on the terminal now i'm going to open the terminal and then in order to clone it i'm going to run the command git clone and then provide the url which i have just copied so this is the path of the repository hit enter and you will see that cloning will be started inside a new folder called devika Now if I open my test dev folder which I have created inside which you can see we have a new folder called devika and if I go inside the folder I have all of these files So let's move inside this devika folder using the command cd devika In order to install devika on your local system there are a few requirement that you need to fulfill First one is to have the olama server installed and running then you need to have bun installed on your local system because we are going to be running the devika ui using the bun so firstly i am going to install the olama on my linux machine so here is the url for the page if you are working on the windows operating system you can follow the steps for installation for the windows since i am working on the linux i am going to copy this is a command that which will install the olama on my system so i am going to open a new terminal from right here and inside the terminal i'm going to paste the command for installing olama hit enter and you will see that the installation will begin and once the installation is finished the olama will be successfully installed inside our system and we can always go ahead and run it so if you want to run the server you have to run the command olama serve and the server will be started here it is showing you that this address is already in use because once i executed this curl command the olama server was successfully downloaded and was in the running state already that is why this port is already in use so after downloading and installing olama the next thing that we need is the bun as you can see that bun is a fast javascript bundler it is used to bundle javascript and typescript project so here once again we have a curl command in order to install the bun on the mac os and linux So I'm going to copy the command. I'm going to open the terminal once again and I'm going to paste the command right here. Hit enter and you will see that your installation will begin and it is successfully executed. And in order to have the bun in the running state, you need to close your terminal and open a new terminal because if you start running bun on this same terminal, so if I run the command bun, you will see that it will not recognize it. but if you close it and create a new terminal then bun will be recognized all right so after satisfying and fulfilling all of these requirements now head back to our previous terminal inside which we have moved to the devika directory which we have cloned from the github now there are set of commands that we need to execute head to the github repository of devika and if you scroll down you will see the installation steps so here it again tells you that Devika requires the following things that as dependencies which are the olama and the bun which we have successfully executed then we have already performed the first step which was to clone the devika repository we have navigated to the project directory now the third step is to install the required dependencies 
which is done using the pip command in this requirements.txt file is present inside the devicut directory. So since we are already inside this directory, I am simply gonna paste the command pip install dash r requirements.txt hit enter and it will start downloading and install all the requirements which are present inside the file. So once all of your requirements have been successfully installed, now we are gonna move towards the next step. But before that, I'm gonna clear my screen. Alright, head back to the GitHub repo and you can see that after executing this command, now the next thing is to install the browsers in the Playwright with their dependencies. For that, I'm gonna open a new terminal and in order to install the Playwright, I need to have the Node.js installed and in order to install the Node.js on the Linux, I'm gonna be using the NVM. So firstly, let's go ahead and install NVM using the curl statement like this one. Hit enter and it will start downloading and installing NVM on your system. And once the NVM is successfully installed, I'm going to close it and then open a new terminal window in order to have the effect of NVM. Now inside this new terminal window, I'm going to use NVM install mode. Hit enter and then you will see that it will start downloading and installing Node.js on our system. Alright, so once the NVM and the Node.js have been successfully installed, I'm gonna head to my previous terminal where I was performing the installation steps for Devika. I'm gonna run the command npx playwright install with dependencies. And this is going to install the browsers inside the N playwright along with their dependencies. Once you do that, it will ask you that you need to install the following packages. Press Y to proceed and it will start downloading and installing everything. Once this is done, I'm going to clear my screen once again and we are going to head to our fourth step which is to set up the necessity API keys and the configurations. So if I go to this configuration section right here by opening this link and here in the configuration section you will see that it says Devika requires certain configuration settings and API keys to function properly. There is a file called sample.config.toml you have to rename it to this file and update the file with the following information. You have all of these information. You have to update it according to your requirements and then you need to install certain API keys. You need to add the API keys for the search engine, either for the Bing search engine or the Google search engine. And you also need to add the API key for different models. If you want to use OpenAI, then you can provide its model. If you want to use Cloud, you can provide its model. If you want to use Bing, then you can use this model by providing its API key. So now let's head to our Devika folder. Here we have the file called sampleconfig.toml. Firstly, I'm going to rename it to simply config.toml. After renaming the file, I'm going to open it inside the text editor. And here is the part for the API keys. You need to add any API key for any model that you want along with the Google search ID and the Google search engine ID. After adding all the required libraries, now head to our next step, which is to start the Devika server. So inside the same terminal, I'm going to run the command python3 because I'm using python3 and then devika.py. And this is the file which actually contains all the code for the backend of the Devika. So once you run it, it will create the backend server in order to run Devika. Okay, so you can see that the BERT model has been loaded successfully. The serving class app is Devika and the debug mode is off. If you will see all of this information on the terminal, this means that your Devika backend server is all set and up and ready to be used. Now, the only thing that is left is to configure the user interface in order to use Devika. And for that, I'm going to go to this directory inside which I'm going to go to the UI folder because now we're going to start the user interface. Inside the UI folder, I'm going to open the terminal and run a set of commands inside it. So firstly, inside this new terminal, I'm going to install using the bun and then use the bun to run the dev file present inside the UI folder. So here is my terminal in which I am inside the UI folder. Firstly, I'm going to run the command bun install you will see that it will start installing certain libraries and 164 packages have been successfully installed. Now we are gonna use the bun to run the dev file which is present inside the UI folder of Devika which contains the user interface of the application. Now simply hit enter and if everything is fine, you will get a local URL like this which will redirect you to the Devika frontend. So I'm gonna hold the control key 
and left click the URL and you will see that on the new browser tab, an interface like this will appear. And you will see that this interface is pretty much like the interface of the Devon. Right now you have three different boxes. You have a tab on the top where you have to select the project and select the model. So firstly, I'm going to click on the drop down menu that says select project. If you have already created any project, then you can select it. But if you don't have any project, you can simply click on create new project. And here you have to provide a name to your project. I'm going to call it test one and then click OK. Once you create it, now you will see that here on the drop down menu for the project, you will have test one. Then on the right hand side, we have the select model option. If you click on the drop down menu, you can see that there are multiple models available to you. So if you remember that I provided it the API key for my OpenAI account. So I have to select a model that is for, from the OpenAI. So I'm going to use the GPT-4 Turbo. After selecting it, now you will see that your project along with the model will be appearing on the top. Here is the text box in which you are going to write the prompt. So firstly, I'm going to prompt it that how many days are there in a week? I know that it is a very simple prompt, but I just want to see if it is able to answer it or not. Once you are happy with your prompt, hit enter and then wait for it to generate the response. You will see in the terminal that it is in the waiting state. All right, so the response is generated. Let's scroll up a little bit to see the complete response. Okay, so firstly, it is providing that here's my step-by-step -step plan. Firstly, it is initializing the browser. Then it is navigating to the search engine. So I've provided it the Google search engine. And then it is asking the question to the browser. So in addition to just providing the response to a prompt, it is also providing us the steps which it is running on the backend. And after running all of these steps, it is providing us this answer. So this is a pretty straightforward, but I've got to make sure that the information is spot on. So it is searching online for the response just to double check. And then it has provided me the response that it is easy peasy. I know there are seven days in a week, no brainer, but let's make sure that the response is not just accurate, but also engaging. And then it is working on its own to provide the days of the week as well. So this means that it was able to understand our basic prompt and was able to go through the search browser in order to get the answer for a prompt. Now let's see if it is able to generate code for us or not. I've refreshed the page and I've created a new project called the model. I'm going to select it this time. And now for the model, I'm going to use the GPT 3.5. And once again, I'm going to provide it the basic prompt. I'm going to provide it to write a program in Python that prints the numbers from 1 to 100. Now simply hit enter and wait for it to generate the response. Okay, so it is providing us the step-by-step -step plan. So these are all the steps that it will perform in order to generate the code for our prompt. Here is the internal monologue. So it says that I'll start by creating the string and then writing the loop. All right, so it has generated the code and here in the browser, you can see that it has also provided us the URL and the front page of the website where it fetched the code from. And in the terminal, it has provided us the code, which is pretty decent. In this way, you, you can use Devika to test different models and generate code with them. I feel like that it's a very good initial step given that Devin is not even available at all. Whereas Devika, on the other hand, is an open source alternative which you can use today. I know that there are definitely a lot of issues with the code base under, but it is under constant development. And the best thing about this is that it is an open source. So there are a whole bunch of open requests. And if you want a feature that needs to be added to the Devika, then you can implement it and make sure that you can contribute to the project in order to add that feature. But that's all for this video. Try out Devika for yourselves and let me know in the comments that what do you think about it. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.